Good evening and welcome to Law Talk, the show that brings the Constitution, the law, and the events of today to you each month. Good evening and welcome to Law Talk. Tonight we have three exciting subjects. What's our first subject tonight, Mark? Well, the first one is my hero, Kaskin, and this guy has done more cover-ups, obstruction of justice, perjury, and sedition. It's really not a capital crime this guy hasn't committed, and I would say he's, you know, he makes Al Capone look like Mother Teresa. Okay, let me make sure. This guy's already in prison, right? Uh, no, actually, he's running the country now. What do you mean running the country? Uh, Kaskin is the commissioner of the IRS, and he was in charge of the vote rigging and the cover-up, and the vote rigging for the next election. So he's pretty much, they, they run the country. It's kind of a de facto dictatorship. Well, I have a question. Wasn't he also the one that said, there are no more emails? Well, there were there till there weren't, and then there were, or, and, and then there weren't. And they're not, now it just turns out, now they're not again. Okay, <laughs> now I understand that he said, there are no more emails. Right. And then he said a week later, we found emails. Mm. And then two weeks later, he said, there are no more emails. And then he said, we found the backup reel of emails. Well, no, they, and where they, do those go? No, but the, uh, it was the IG. Uh, Inspector the, General. That found, found uh, 422 backup tapes. This all has to do with Lois Lerner and the rigging of the 2008 election and and, and the 2012 election. Well, that, well they wrote they no, rigged it wasn't an election they, here and there they, between they, they, friends. Right, whatever. Basically, they knocked out like 20 or 30 percent of the voting population by uh, indicting them or whatever they did. Well, no, uh, they failed to allow their 501c uh, nonprofit corporations from being incorporated. Well, but not only that, they had the. Alcohol, tobacco people went up, the tax people, OSHA went after them. The whole federal government just pretty much came down. Yeah, you know, prohibited about like 20 to 30 percent of the voting population from voting in those elections. I understand that percentage <laughs> of the population they tried to suppress was actually a conservative part of the population. <laughs> well, who knows? But anyway, there's so anyway, there's 422 backup tapes the IG found. And, uh, you know, the IRS has been looking for these tapes for years and years and years. Oh, and my years. God. Uh, years. Yeah. But unfortunately, oh. the guy they appointed to look for him was legally blind. <laughs> But anyway, not legally blonde? No, not legally That's blonde. That's right, he's bald, isn't he? And so anyway, so, so the, finally the IG spent like a couple hours and they found the 422 backup tapes, 24,000 emails, and so they gave them to the DOJ. And so judge, entrust them yeah, with the DOJ. Yeah, and so Judge Sullivan, the U.S. District Court in Texas, uh, said, well, I want to see all those backup tapes. I want to see all those emails. And the DOJ destroyed all the backup tapes. Oh, by accident. Well, they're they, gone. They didn't understand what the judge wanted. The judge ordered them to not destroy any more backup tapes and bring them to him. And they thought that the order didn't really count because I guess the judge wasn't a Marxist or something, whatever the reason was. But anyway, so they just I understand it's because the judge made an order from the bench, right. but didn't write it down. Oh, so yeah. it wasn't really an order. It no, was well, just a, said, it was more like a, a sort of discretionary <laughs> request. <laughs> so anyway, they said, well, we're waiting for written orders. But anyway, so they... <laughs> Did they ever get a written order? <laughs> well, anyway, so the judge was a little upset. He said, this is ridiculous. This is absurd. You know, why do you need two orders? But the DOJ at this point, you know, it's a de facto dictatorship. And, like, they've kind of overrun the judiciary. The judiciary is kind of a joke now. It doesn't really count anymore. We just basically have a de facto di dictatorship run by well, thugs. Wait thug a minute. The but, judiciary counts when the right decision comes down. Yeah, I know, but they're afraid to say anything, right? They don't want to get bumped off. Okay, but anyway, there's so much shredding going on. I was driving through Washington, D.C. the other day, and there was so much shredding. I mean, there's shredding. They're getting rid of emails. They're getting rid of paperwork. They're getting rid of servers. I mean, just, it, it's like a ticker tape parade there. It's like confetti. There's so much shredding going on in D.C., you wouldn't believe it. There's stuff flying all over. We were driving along, and actually, a bunch of shredded stuff just flew into the window of the car. Well, it's what, pretty, what was it? What, what, what kind of shredded stuff? Just some, uh, you know, random stuff, but it was like, uh, like there's, there was one of these memos was about, uh, you know, you remember the Obamacare website. Yeah, it was the Affordable Care Act. The Affordable Care they wanted to do a website, and this was like the bidding process for the Obamacare website. Oh, we found those emails. So I found this, and so it's, you know, these are the minutes from the uh, meetings, and here it says, uh, so Obama was looking for a bid up for the Obamacare website, and then a high school kid from Cupertino, California, came in and said he would do the site for $2 million. Well, it sounds a lot cheaper than what they actually got it for. And then, so then Bill Gates came in and said he would do the site for $10 million. Wow. And then Obama asked for a cost breakdown, and, and, th and this is what Gates told him. I'm going to test your psychic powers and see if you, can, if you can see through this blue paper with your mind. And it's amazing how the, the blue paper that blew in from my window from Washington, D.C., shredding 
looks a lot like our TV note paper. Um, but anyway, put this up to your mind and uh, read through that blue paper and what, what was Bill Gates' answer when Obama said, please give me a cost breakdown for the 10 million? I, I read that Bill Gates said, I'm going to have to spend money on hiring new personnel, taxes for hiring the new personnel, liability insurance for hiring the new personnel, state taxes, federal taxes, and that's going to cost $8 million, and then I'm going to pay the guy from Cupertino $2 million. Well, let's see if that's what it, see what that was actually what the, how it went. It says, well, there's corporate tax, liability insurance, workers' comp, property tax, disability insurance, employment insurance. That's $8 million, and then you pay the kid from Cupertino Tino, $2, $2, million. $2 million to make the site. Okay, so that's, that's one. Now we had another part of the bidding process. Uh, Tawny Tones Whiteley, who you know is Michelle Obama's friend. Best friend from Columbia. Yeah, right? no, it was from Princeton. Princeton, from Princeton that's Okay. Right. Uh, she came in, she says, you and know. And she uh, runs a Canadian company yeah. that actually got the contract. Yeah, they got the contract. And, and uh, Obama said, well, how much will it cost to build the site? And she said, well, that for the Obamacare site. And she said, well, that's going to be $2 billion, $2 million. And so Obama asked for a cost breakdown. And, um, and what did Tony say? Well, let's see, we're going to use your psychic powers if you can, if you can uh, discern through this blue paper that we found floating around in Washington, D.C. What did, what did she say? Tony Tones Whiteley says, one billion for you, one billion for me, and two million for the kid in Cupertino to build the site. Let's see if that's the correct answer. Let's see. Swami, Jim, a billion for you, a billion for me, and I pay the high school kid from Cupertino two billion dollars to build the site. So that's kind of interesting. And then we found this is kind of a random email. There's a lot of stuff blowing around in D.C. I, I just don't understand how all these things could be blown blowing in windows. It's just amazing. unbelievable. And this is a random email. It says from uh, Xi Jinping, head of the Communist Party in China. And it says to Puppet Obama, good work, Obama. You're the best puppet we ever bought. Like how you bankrupted America, put American debt to China, and dismantled American's military. Here's a billion-dollar bonus. And then what... What did Puppet say to Z? Let's see if you can, can, can discern through your psychic powers. I read don't know. Through, this is a blue, tough one. Read through the blue paper Let and see what see it is. Let me see if I can see through the blue paper. <sighs> I believe our esteemed leader said, you've won. China has won many, many wars over thousands of years without firing a shot by buying the despots of a variety of countries to ensure that they control those countries. And thanks for making me one of them. <laughs> okay, let's see if your psychic powers are working tonight. And here it says, puppet to Z. Thanks, Z. China has won wars without firing your shot for thousands of years by buying corrupt foreign despots. I'm glad I was able to get in on the action. So that's, it's just amazing. There's so much flying around late, lately. And then oh, you better keep that window open. Who knows where we're yeah, going to fly yeah, you, next? You never know what's going to fly in next. But um, so anyway, now we've got actually they're doing some other uh, things. Are coming up lawsuits, and the IRS is actually doing uh, tax audits against political opponents, and they're saying they did uh, you know uh, five times as many tax audits against you know than the, conservatives. Then they then they, they they in the last fifteen years. So they they've done. They've done more and more audits. So before, they were just saying you can have your 501. You, they were closing down your businesses. They were destroying your career and your reputation. Now they're auditing people to death. So basically, the FBI and the, well, the, I'm just saying, the IRS is pretty much completely controlling the whole voting mechanism. And so they're the de facto uh, portbilio of the, of the country now. And so it's kind of set up like a Soviet gulag. You have, you know... Uh, the wardens who are Obama and Bonner and, Bonner and all those, Boehner and all Boehner. those guys, those guys are all the wardens. You have the guards who are the federal and state employees. You have the trustees, all the people on corporate welfare, all the people that are on union welfare, and then all the people that are, you know, paid welfare for votes, basically. Their job is to complain that the prisoners aren't breaking rocks fast enough. And then you've got, you know, basically 20% of the population who actually work for a living. They're breaking the rocks. You know why the other people yeah, live off well, the battleground? I, I think what we have to do, Mark, <laughs> is here. Um, first of all, I don't want to be breaking any rocks. So I think we better move on to our next subject. Okay. So, and what is our next subject tonight, Mark? Well, see, when they first wrote Article uh, Article One, Section Eight 
Uh, Congress was supposed to have the power of the, the purse. The tax and spending clause yeah, tax that we're and talking spending. about right now. Okay, the tax and spending clause was something that's a heavily debated item from the seven, late 1700s after the formation of our country. With Madison and Hamilton. Madison and Hamilton. And they wrote, uh, weren't they involved with the Federalist Papers? Right. And uh, the question was whether or not <laughs> Congress has the power to tax and then spend the money that's taxed from the population. And there's actually, so, but how is that? Is that still as it is today? Well, yeah, they haven't changed the writing. They just ignore it completely. Um, it, there was, you know, basically, I think it was like 13 or 14 enumerated clauses in that article, but there's another 12 or 13 enumerated clauses throughout the uh, throughout the Constitution. So well, basically, aren't those other clauses used to circumvent the original clause? No, no, those are. There's like little things about post office and education. There's things that are actually. There's about 36 enumerated clauses. In other words, there's. They actually have a number, and you can actually point to them and say, "This is a, this is where we get our spending power from." Right. Now, those enumerated powers are the only things that the federal government is supposed to spend money on. Is allowed to. Everything else goes to the states, and basically what goes to the states is police power and health and safety, right? And what the states don't have goes to an individual, right? So the federal government only can spend money on those 36 things. You know, they, they can spend money on the post office, on the army, or on the navy, um, on interstate commerce. There's just several things well, that national they, defense, national they defense, control, treaties, can, treaties, tre controlling immigration, immigration, yeah. yeah. So those things, and anything else they spend money on is unconstitutional. So that's basically just racketeering. Any penny that they spend that's not in those enumerated clauses is actually just because they have guns and people are afraid to. Go well, wait a minute. Then, why, why, then how can you have departments like the Department of Education or the Department of Environmental Protection Agency? How can you have these departments where there's that money spent, and how is that being spent? Is that constitutional? Absolutely not. That's just those are just gangsters. I mean, they may under the color of law they may call themselves the federal government, but those are nothing more than racketeers. There's nothing constitutional about anything they do. Every money they spent, they took by force. And actually, what it comes down to, the people taking that money before us, that's actually human trafficking. Because the definition of human trafficking is to take money by force and force people to work for, for something, that, for nothing. And so actually, the IRS and the federal government, when they spend money in this unconstitutional matter, if you look at international and national, they're involved in human trafficking. Well, much okay. less, so, much less being so government minute, officials. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's. This is a little complicated, so we better start thinking about how the. If you're talking about Congress has the power to tax, right? Congress has the power to spend, but the way you're describing it, it sounds like all that's being everything after tax is actually Congress is being circumvented by well, all these administrative agencies. No, but I mean the Constitution. Actually, the Constitution is quite clear. The federal government is restricted to spending money on the enumerated clauses. So why they are they spending money on all these other things? Where's because, education as an enumerated well, because clause? Well, because the country has been overthrown. First of all, the votes have been rigged, and the country has been... A, this is no longer a constitutional republic. We're in a de facto, basically, a Soviet gulag or, a, you know, a dictatorship. Um, but, yeah, nothing they do there is legal or constitutional. That's all, that's all gangster and racketeering. They do it because they've got guns, and they'll, they'll kill you or throw you in prison. But there's really no force of law behind any of that. All those things they're doing, the things in health and welfare, Obamacare, all that, that's all should be done by the states. Okay, so the then, wait a minute. So when the, the states, state, the states when has the, when police the individuals powers. Are, say the individuals in California are all taxed, that all the money from California gets sent to the federal government is supposed to be redistributed back to the state of California. You're trying to tell me that's not happening? Well, that see, there's different political uh, mechanizations and kickbacks that go on with that. And like I, I'm saying, like we demonstrated before, every time you have a kickback, billions go into the pockets of the politicians, and maybe uh, some of the pocket change falls to the people. Um, but anytime you have some kind of kickback scheme where, okay, we're going to take money from California to pay for someone who needs health care in Florida or something, most of that money gets stolen by the politicians or the unions or whoever's, whoever's handling all the, the money. All the middlemen. All oh, the middlemen. You know, so there's nothing less. If you look at all these things, they're about 95% inefficient. You know, so like for every dollar spent, maybe a nickel goes to the poor person and 95% goes to the person who like, wah, 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 I felt sorry for that poor person, so I took 95% of his money feeling sorry for him, right? That's the government well, job. Well, I'm glad they felt sorry for yeah, him. Yeah, at least they felt sorry <laughs> that's for that's him. That's where they get the money. So anyway, but I, but I think this, the states have a right to do all these things. They have, they, there's no enumerated clause on the state. If the states wants to say everyone makes $100 an hour, 
and everyone pays 100% income tax, the state can do that. There's no reason they can't do that. There's, states can do whatever they want. There's no real restriction on it. But the U.S. Constitution puts these restrictions on federal spending, and there's no reason the federal has invaded the state's States well, that's under the Tenth Amendment. The yeah. states are protected under the Tenth yeah, Amendment, well, supposedly. Well, the thing is, but it's mainly the enumerated clauses. It's like you can't spend money on that. And so now Congress has been completely usurped, and there's like all these things that, you know, if you if you don't want Congress to spend something, Congress can't stop spending now. They have no longer control of the purse. Okay, Medicare can't be stopped. Uh, you know, border situation can't be stopped. Congress can't 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 withhold funding for this because they're self-funded. In other words, these are like, uh, you know, petty warlords and little fiefdoms and, you know, just people with guns and, you know, they call themselves government agents, but they're nothing more than racketeers. And they, you know, collect these monies and distribute it amongst themselves and throw a few pennies to the peasants. You know, that's what they well, do. Well, then, and then I have a question. So how, how is this, how is this, this evolution got to this point and is there anything that can be done to stop this? Well, I, I think the loophole that this all went through was the uh, uh, the, the the welfare clause, the, the general, general welfare, the general clause. Clause, welfare clause, and there was huge but arguments. But wasn't the Supreme Court involved with this? Well, even the, in well, the Kennedy, well, Kennedy was a big. Is a, he wants the open-ended uh, general welfare clause. So basically, a general welfare clause that says, you know, you're supposed to have a post office, you're supposed to have an army, you're supposed to have a navy, and take care of the general welfare. Now, when most people thought of the general welfare is like if you have a typhoid economic epidemic or something, you would separate out the sick people and put them on an island so they right. don't kill everyone. But then the general welfare is like, well, geez, I want to go bowling Monday night, so I need new bowling shoes, and that's part of my welfare. And I want food, so my welfare is food, and so my welfare is, uh, I need a place to stay, and I want to take my wife out to dinner, so it's welfare. So basically, the the definition of welfare began to be well, wait a anything minute. I want. Are, are we all falling into the entitlement realm when well, we start going into general welfare? Well, the thing about, well, entitlement's a slightly different thing. Entitlements are part of the budgets that the voters have no control over anymore. Yeah, but see, entitlements right now, they've already statistically stated they're around 75, 80% of the budget. Well, it's more than that. Well, in California, it's almost all the budget. I mean, the governor can't change very much of the budget, and the Congress can't change... Because these are entitlements, these are fixed every year, so they're never voted on. Mm -hmm. And so, you, okay, the, the easiest way to, to, to bring it back to somewhat like a free country, but, you know, most people like a benevolent dictatorship as long as they're, the, the government steals more from their neighbor from them, they feel they're being protected. You know? Well, I but. think what we ought to do is, I think what we ought to do is wait to see how that next election comes up, and we're going to see how this whole entitlement spending and the general welfare is actually interpreted. So why don't we move on to our third okay. subject tonight, Mark? What is that? Okay, well, Wisconsin, okay. Wisconsin. This You're talking about Scott Walker territory. Scott Walker. Now, the Supreme Court got all upset just because, you know, um, you mean the Supreme Court in uh, Wisconsin? Uh, yeah, Supreme Court of Wisconsin's got got all upset just because this uh, DA uh, John Chisholm, I don't know if it's from the Chisholm, Chisholm Trail, Trail, from the Chisholm Trail, was doing a secret prosecution. A secret a prosecution. Secret prosecution. Whoa, yeah, that, that's kind of like mean, remember what's remember, his job title? <laughs> remember, you never like Animal House. It's like double secret probation. So, oh, double secret probation. Appa appa apparently, anybody who got along with Walker or worked with Scott Walker was on double secret probation. And but they, did they know that? Well, I guess they didn't know that till they had like paramilitary raids on their house and they went through their accounts and they looked through all their associates and. Um, all the aides of Walker were kind of shaken down and that kind of thing. And also there was a special prosecutor, a Francis Schmidt, that was involved in this. And so what these guys are, they're government employees. And I think we talked about collective bargaining, right? We talked about how the money moves around in collective bargaining, like, I hire you to hire me, and we just kind of take taxpayer money and pay each other a raise every 10 right, seconds right, or so. Right, right, right. And that and way, the, the, yeah. as long as I keep hiring you, <laughs> I'll pay you more. Yeah, yeah. So yes. it's a kickback scheme. And so collective bargaining in the unions and the mafia are all one thing. And the government is all part of this kind of mafia union uh, 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 kickback scheme. And so these people are very entitled. They don't want to ever have to actually work for a living. So when they, what Walker said is like, we want to lose, we want to end collective bargaining. In other words, you, you can't use taxpayer money to fund campaigns, right? And so that was what happened. He took out... And well, so if he's taking away taxpayer money, you're actually talking about the monies that are paid by the governments to the teachers' union. They can't use that money to run political campaigns? Is well, that what you're well, saying? Well, see, what happened is used to be the taxpayer money went to the union, and part of that money 
and you had to be in the union to have a government job, and you had to be pay union dues, and part of that union dues went to hire a governor or wherever, or bribe a governor or whatever you want to call it, basically pay off a government to give the the union a raise, and it was a cyclic thing where pat taxpayer money was to make sure that no person who worked for a living ever would have any influence on, on the government. Well, you know, the only problem with that is, is that uh, I know Scott Walker came in and into Wisconsin. And he took a beating. He took a beating, and they tried to throw him out of office, but he beat, he won. No, they tried to impeach him. They brought the Supreme Court against him. They did everything. Now they, and then when that didn't work, they did these secret prose, uh, prosecutions. Looking did, for evidence. They did the midnight raids. They, uh, they intimidated people. They, they indicted him. They did this. So they pretty much pulled every trick in the book, you know, to try to make sure that they, they never would have to work it again for a living. And you've got to understand that, you know, this is a big class of our country. There's 20% of the, of the country who are basically like prison guards. They're the government employees. They've never worked. They never will work. If they didn't have a government job, they starve because they never make that kind of money in private enterprise. And uh, they feel entitled and they're willing to go to great lengths. To protect to, their entitlement. To, to protect their uh, protected position or their, their special positions. And the abolition of free speech and the vote, that's, that's nothing to them. Um, you know, they, the justice system was used to punish political opponents. And uh, most of the tax money you pay is embezzled. And what's not embezzled, it's used to crush any... Uh, opposition. Well, not only crush any opposition, but any entrepreneurship. You know, they don't want you starting a business or doing anything. They want everybody on welfare, bowing to the government. You know, and either working for the government or bowing to the government. They don't want any entrepreneurship. They don't want any private enterprise. All those things are considered bad because those might upset the apple cart where they get all the apples and the few little crumbs that fall down to the peasants, which are the citizens and the taxpayers. Those little crumbs that fall off the table, you know, they don't want to have to give them a whole slice of apple, you know. So yeah, well, that's, uh, that's unfortunate. But see, that's also is represented in the demise of unions across the country. They've been union, union membership has been dropping dramatically. Well, but not in the government. Not in the government. That's the, the last The only one. union that's growing is like the SEIU and yeah. the things that are all government agency type uh, groups. And funny enough, it's interesting how. Yeah, they're the ones that are, they're the ones that are the last bastion of basically. Of this, unionism. Well, it's really a feudal system, right? right. A, they're warlords, they're like petty warlords, and there's dif different fiefdoms, right? They extract um, conscription and taxes and slave labor from the peasants, and then they live this life of luxury. And, you know, so it's, it's actually a feudal system. Well, the, the, the problem with that is, is that, once again, as we talked about the collective bargaining, collective bargaining, it comes back to the idea that you... You you elect me, and I'm going to give you more. So the only collective bargain is together we're making a deal <laughs> that you put me in power and I'll give you more money. Well, you know, it, like I said, it, it harks back to, you know, war, petty warlords, and that's pretty much what I, you know, we used to have a constitutional republic. Now, people said this is democracy. It was not designed as democracy. It was never designed as democracy. It, okay, and the thing about a democracy is basically mob rule. I mean, if you have five guys that want one person's food, they kill him and take his food. In a republic, everyone's supposed to be treated equally under the law. Everyone has equal rights. So a republic is a much more sophisticated system than a democracy. If you have a pirate ship, that's a democracy, right? If you have a republic, everyone has equal treatment under the law, and they have rights. So minorities have rights. So we have shifted into more of a social democracy, you know, and each of these little federal agencies have become their little fiefdoms, and they have little warlords in charge of that, and they extract tribute from people, you know, like... Like a Hillary running around and doing front for her. Then when her husband comes, they give him five million. She makes a deal as Secretary of State, and he shows up, and then they pay him under the table or, or for a speech. No, it's fifty no, million. It's for his foundation. Yeah, for his foundation, That's right? Not, don't bond. forget, this is a this is a beneficial foundation. We have the beneficial the, the, the benefit for the Clintons, yeah. And uh, well, I think yeah, they give five or two percent to that. No, they spend. Well, no, they, no, have, they, they, they spend five percent for the needy. Well, they have the. They thing only that, keep ninety five percent. Come they, on. They, 
they have, you got to give them the credit. They, do, where they, credit do, is they due. do give five percent away, but then with the with the tax savings, they're actually pulling in more. But anyway, <laughs> oh, they are. They are. They are paying, <laughs> paying much more because then they're not paying their income on that. So well, wait a basically, minute. didn't we cover that on our last show where they forgot to pay uh, like oh, yeah, two hundred million? Yeah, they forgot yeah, to report. Yeah, yeah. Well, Just off the books. That was a bribe from the Russians. And that was a bribe from the Russians in Canada. Yeah, but Canada doesn't count. Okay. Yeah, Canada. But I mean, the thing they did in Haiti and everything like that. You know, that's like the it's a ghost town. It was supposed to be the newest thing. The newest thing. But they did get a cell phone contract and a couple things like that. So I mean, didn't they give that to Singapore Slim out of Mexico? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And so that's the way it works. You know, you've got these petty war and, and I think Clintons are a good example of a good petty little warlord. They go around extract tribute from their peasants, and you know, people bow down to the queen. And if you don't do what you say, you you get a Vince Foster or or a Ted Stevens. You know, you well, they get out of the way. You either go fishing or, or you, end you don't up, come back from you, an airplane ride. Or, yeah, you're right. You go fishing or you you. Fall into the fountain after you accidentally shoot yourself you with, a gun, yeah, yeah, or with a gun so, that so, you can't even find. So yeah, so those things are how it's running now. So, um, but the Supreme Court did stand up to this. I'm pretty proud of them. I, in this day and age, I'm really shocked that a Supreme Court okay, had the so nerve to do so that. So let's go back to the beginning. So the Supreme Court of Wisconsin stood up and said, told the prosecutors, you can't do, you, you can't do this because number one, it's warrantless search, and so you're protected under the Fourth Amendment. It's freedom of speech, protected under the First yeah. Amendment. And instead, the prosecutor, what did he say? Did they stop doing paramilitary raids of Scott Walker's uh, aides and uh, supporters? Well, I think they put an end to those. They they put an end to those things, but those were going on for some time. You know, this is I know, but it's not stop. Yeah. And, and what was interesting was this was reported. It wasn't antidotal that was happening. They were having paramilitary raids on the aides of Scott Walker, where they'd be coming in pre-dawn, kicking the door open, shooting the dog, or whatever's going on. But they're armed with heavy weaponry, and they're taking computers out ledgers out as though somehow Scott Walker's aides were running a RICO criminal organization instead of being campaign. Well, I mean, I think that is pretty much true, that if someone wants to upset the uh, this, this kind of government, uh, uh, what do you call it, feeding at the trough, you know, if, if someone wants it, that's, that is considered, you know, the most terrible thing to these folks because my god they might have to go out and get a job you mean they might have to work <laughs> yeah they might have to work you know for a living yeah if you don't and, <laughs> i mean wait a minute I, I don't know about you mark but i i know every day i have to get up and go out for a uh, job you're a sucker yeah but i'm a sucker but i we're part aren't we part of like the the 10 15 percent of the people that yeah, actually we're, work we're the ones that have to break the break in the rocks we're yeah, breaking break the, the, break the rocks hey, hey, you, you, Break rocks faster, you know, and yeah. stop complaining. You know, stop complaining. Break, break yeah, some yeah. rocks. Maybe we'll give you another <laughs> cup of water if, if you break another couple yeah. of rocks. So, yeah. So that was, I was impressed with the Wisconsin Supreme Court. And, and also, well, Walker. wait a minute. I have a question, though. Are the, is the, are the district attorney appealing this to the, to, to the circuit, the next circuit, the Court of Appeals? Um, I'm not sure where this is going. I'm not sure if he. I, I don't know if that was the kind of action this was. I think. I think it was more like a restraining order against. No, him. a restraining so order. You, it, or they struck down the the investigation. Um, I mean, I think maybe tomorrow we could start a new secret investigation with a new reason. Okay. Well, you know, why don't we do this? Why don't we wait and like see those, how this plays out? It's probably like those whack-a-mos, you know. Yeah. Well, we'll see how this whack-a-mole plays <laughs> out. And I want to thank you for joining us tonight with Law Talk. And I will tell you, Mark, it's been very well, enjoyable. You know, and that thing is, you know, it's surprising how many I, of these things are flying around. I don't know how many. <laughs>